What's going on, everybody? Welcome back into the Fantasy Football Fellas YouTube channel. My name is Lucas Wentzel, and today we're talking eight must-start players that you need to have in your lineups ahead of week four of Fantasy Football. We have been doing fairly well in these must-starts over the last few weeks. Hopefully give you a few fringe guys here. Also, a few just got to lock them into your lineup. Don't ask any questions. Don't get cute. We'll cover who those players are here in this video. We're going to start at the quarterback position, work our way, running back, wide receiver, tight end. But let's dive into those quarterbacks now. Our first must-start of the week, Daniel Jones versus the Seattle Seahawks. Now, this man, he is quite literally the definition of matchup dependent. And thankfully, he gets a good matchup this week against the Seahawks. The Seahawks currently, they're allowing 20 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. That is the eighth most. They're actually 28th, fourth worst. That would be in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks this year. And they've allowed over 1,000 passing yards already. That is the second most, uh, to put an exact number on that, they have allowed 1,018 passing yards already. Again, second most in the league. And we look at the, the past two weeks, Andy Dalton and Jared Goff, they've had no problem piecing apart this defense. Uh, 23 fantasy points, each of them in back-to-back -back weeks. And now I get it, right? I, I named this up front. It has been a roller coaster thus far for Danny Dimes. You know, 6.46 fantasy points in week one. 34, 31, excuse me, 0.74 in week two. That was the overall quarterback one. And then only five fantasy points against San Francisco last week. So it's been all over the place, but this is a matchup that I feel comfortable starting him in, especially in a home game where the over-under for this game is set at 47 points. There will be points scored in this game. I am very comfortable starting Danny Dimes this week uh, if you need to uh, in your fantasy lineup this week. Second quarterback must start of the week. Anthony Richardson versus the Los Angeles Rams. He is back out of concussion protocol. And after what we saw him do to the Houston Texans in week two, I don't know how he doesn't find a way into your fantasy lineup this week. Uh, if you don't remember what he was up against in week two or what he did to the Houston Texans in week two, pardon me, he scored 17.7 fantasy points, two rushing touchdowns through a quarter and a half. <laughs> that was not, that was not a whole game through a quarter and a half. That man had two rushing touchdowns. He had already put up 17.7 fantasy points. He was a quarterback start of the week that week. And now statistically, though, it doesn't look like a good matchup with the Rams on paper. They're only allowing 10.6 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks this year. That's the seventh fewest. They've only allowed 577 passing yards, which is also the seventh fewest. But keep in mind, they've played Geno Smith. Not a bad quarterback. Brock Purdy. Uh, he's fine. Uh, and a gimpy Joe Burrow, who is clearly not himself. So I'm not too concerned about this. Anthony Richardson's rushing ability alone should be able to get him inside of your fancy lineup this week. He's inside of the top 10 for all three of us, fellas. Uh, and fire him up this week. Get him in your lineup. Oh, excuse me. I almost choked there. Get him inside your lineup. He's a top eight play for all three of us, fellas, this week. He is a must start at quarterback. Let's move on to running backs now. Javante Williams is our first running back start of the week. Now, I know Javante has been really disappointing thus far. We all knew he wouldn't be the same coming off the ACL injury, right? But he scored less than 10 fantasy points in every single game this year, which is definitely a disappointment. You don't want – we weren't quite expecting – this big of a disappointment from Javante, maybe, but this matchup is just too good to pass up on with the Chicago Bears. They are allowing the second most fantasy points per game to running backs. They are allowing the most rushing touchdowns to running backs this year. And even though the fantasy points haven't been there, there's actually still been some upside there for Javante. Uh, he's seeing a touch on 57% of his opportunities this year. That's the third most amongst running backs. Uh, got that number from Mike Wright over at Fantasy Footballers. Uh, and he currently has a 12.8% target share, which is actually the 12th highest at the position, despite only playing, you know, 42% of the snaps. Because that's a counter argument here, right? It's like he's not playing a ton of the snaps. He's not on the field quite a bit, but... This could be the game. I believe this will be the game where Javante Williams gets back on track. It is the perfect matchup against a struggling Chicago Bears defense, a struggling Chicago Bears team in general. Uh, I, I have Javante ranked in that running back two flex range, so do the other two fellas. Uh, I'm very comfortable putting him in your starting lineup this week uh, just because the matchup is so, so good against the Chicago Bears. Second running back must start of the week. 
James Cook. That man, James Cook, against Miami Dolphins. I love, love, love me some Jimothy Cook. Oh, I love that man. He he is indeed the clear best back in Buffalo, all right? That, that question was solved week two, uh, just like I said it would be. Uh, and he's seen at least 18 touches in every game so far this year. Uh, and I like the matchup with Miami this week. Prior to prior to Miami's throttling of the Broncos last week, let, you know, when you're down 50 points, you kind of don't need to throw there to run the football. You kind of have to throw to keep to stay in the game. Uh, Miami had allowed three running backs to score at least 15 fantasy points over the first two weeks, uh, and they allowed 208 rushing yards against the Chargers in Week One. So this is a defense that can be run on. And even as the lead back, James Cook is averaging a whopping 6.1 yards per carry this year. That is a crazy, crazy number. This is a matchup that that I like. Both offenses are going to get plenty of opportunities to be on the field. This is a high-scoring game. Uh, The over-under here for the week, I believe, is 53.5. So points will be scored. Opportunity will be had for James Cook. Uh, and we have him ranked as such this week. He is a top 15 option for all three of us, even top 12 for the other two fellas. So uh, I love James Cook this week, and he 100% needs to be in your fantasy lineups. Let's move on to wide receivers now. First wide receiver start of the week, Michael Pittman Jr. against the Los Angeles Rams. And I want to start by saying this. I have been very wrong about Michael Pittman Jr. this year. I made a video about him this offseason. This is me taking accountability here. I think a lot of the times people see us in our shorts or like, oh, we're trying to get as much information as cross in as quick a time as possible with as much confidence as possible. But like, I can sit here and tell you I was wrong on Michael Pittman. And I'm very okay. I'm okay with being wrong. I'm okay with being wrong. Uh, I didn't think Anthony Richardson would have the arm talent. I thought he'd be a hindrance, but instead he has seen, Michael Pittman has seen 11 targets and eight receptions in every game so far this year, and he's currently the wide receiver 12 overall. Uh, currently, you got him at a value in your fantasy drafts, uh, and, and I was wrong about that, and, I, and I'm willing to own up to that. Um, but like Richardson, let's focus back on the matchup here. Like Richardson, uh, on paper, this isn't a game you you look at and think, oh, this is a smash start for Michael Pittman, but the volume he's seeing is is undeniable, Right. The over-under on this game, 46.5 points. It's not an astounding number, but clearly the books are expecting points to be put up here. Uh, And in this game, I think sneaky, sneaky shootout potential. Like super sneaky shootout potential. Uh, So with plenty of opportunity, I think this is a fair matchup with the Rams. Again, their secondary isn't anything special. But I think Pittman should be locked into your PPR lineups this week. He should be dead locked in as a wide receiver too until he he gives you reason to otherwise. The 11 targets are just undeniable, and that's something that should be in your lineup every single week. And I like the matchup because I think this game could total quite a few points. Next wide receiver start of the week. Actually in the same game, 2-2 Atwell. Playing against, uh, or at the Indianapolis Colts, excuse me, at Lucas Oil Stadium. Admittedly, I, I kind of wanted to make this start Pukunakua. But I figured since Pittman was already in here, and, and Puka Nakua at this point is, is pretty much a, a locked-in start, just as much as Pittman is, uh, I, I figured I would go with the guy who people would have more questions about, and that's Tutu Atwell. Um, I'm, firing up, I'm firing him up both with, with confidence this week. The Colts, debatably the worst secondary in the NFL. Uh, 43 fantasy points per game allowed to wide receivers this year. They are 8th in receiving yards allowed, ninth in receptions allowed to the position, and they've already allowed six wide receivers, six of them, count them up, two every week, to score 13-plus fantasy points. And four of them, four of them have scored at least 16.5 fantasy points. So you're looking at Puka and Tutu here. Gosh, I love that those are their two first names. Uh, look, this is a great matchup for both. Tutu is currently averaging 16.7 fantasy points per game on the season, and this is a prime matchup for him to make it four straight games of at least 15 fantasy points. I'm firing him up. He is a safe flex option in my mind this week. He's actually a top 24 wide receiver for all three of us fellas this week. That'd make him a wide receiver too uh, in 12-man leagues. All right, let's move on. Last clump of players here. The tight ends, Evan Ingram against the Atlanta Falcons across the pond this week over in London. He is our first must start tight end of the week. Atlanta, they've been getting beat up by tight ends this year. Okay, Luke Musgrave. My I got a bone to pick with Luke Musgrave now. Every time, every time I put my chips in on Luke Musgrave, he disappoints me. I made him my must start against the Falcons in week two. 
Yeah, he didn't do so hot. I put my money on him last night, 36 and a half receiving yards. I was supposed to be free against the Lions. Gets injured, one reception for one yard. I'm done with Luke Musgrave, man. Sam Laporta is my new crush. Uh, we're talking about Evan Ingram, though. Uh, look, Hayden Hurst, he went for 15 points against the Falcons in week one. Sam Laporta went for 22 fantasy points in week three against the Falcons. That was good for the tight end one overall. Ingram has scored at least 11 and a half fantasy points in each of his last two games. I think there's an immense opportunity here for Jacksonville to get on track. I know this offense has been bad, but Evan Ingram has kind of been the steady piece in fantasy that you can kind of rely on every single week. It's nothing big. It's nothing flashy. It's nothing sexy. But like, again, 11 and a half fantasy points in each of the last two weeks. I think that's a good number. And, and Atlanta, again, they've been allowing right around 10, 11 fantasy points per game to tight ends this year. Uh, I have, we all have Evan Ingram as a top five option this week. This is a great chance for, for him and the, the Jaguars to get back on track against the Falcons over in London. Last tight end start of the week. Last start of the week in general. Pat Fryermuth playing against the Houston Texans, and we finally saw Pat put it together last week, uh, put it together relative, uh, three receptions, 43 yards, and a score, uh, and the hope is that he starts to get a bit more involved here with Deontay Johnson, still missing time with a hamstring injury. Uh, look, Houston, they're giving up 13.7 fancy points, uh, or excuse me, <laughs> Houston last week, I'm like seeing Evan Ingram. I'm like, I'm talking about Evan Ingram right now. I'm talking about Pat Frymuth. Uh, They gave up 13.7 fancy points to Evan Ingram last week. Uh, and they've allowed 13 fancy points on average to the tight end position this year. So this might be one of the few weeks where I honestly feel good about putting Pat Frymuth in my lineup. But again, just considering how desolate the tight end position is, I'm just going to play the good matchup. I'm going to play the upside. I'm going to play the talent. And that's Pat Fryermuth this week. I think you can find your way into your lineup uh, as a, a borderline top 12 option in our books. That is all I have for you today. Those are our eight must start players for week four of fantasy football. If you have any other start sick questions, drop them down below in the comment section. If you leave a comment, respond to a comment as well. Uh, help out the rest of the community here too. We're grateful for all the support you all give us. If you want another space to bring your start sick questions and you want even more people to potentially give you feedback, head over to our chalkboard. That is down in the description of the video you are watching here. Uh, we have a community all over there that's ready to respond uh, and give you some feedback on any start set decisions that you have. That's where we're mostly involved as well we have a better chance of seeing that and responding to over there as well make sure you subscribe turn on those notifications we're guys we're dropping so many videos for you it's literally two to three every single day in the form of short form podcast youtube video like this make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on those notifications that way you're going to be alerted when all of our new episodes are up when we go live on sunday morning as well we're going live before kickoff last minute start set decisions if we don't see yours in the comment if we don't see it in the chalkboard whatever you can come to that live ask that question and then again, it's another space where you could potentially get feedback from us. But again, thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, turn on those notifications. We will see you all after week four to recap everything. Uh, waiver wire, trades, more starts next week. We'll, we'll look ahead to best matchups. We'll recap the week. We have so much content, y'all. Just make sure you're subscribed, turn on those notifications. I'll leave it there. We'll see you next week. Deuces. Deuces.